Who is she that comes forth as the morning rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in battle array? Words taken from canticles, but applied to Mary by the Church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today we shall consider briefly what the Legion of Mary is, what it does, and why you should consider joining. So what is the Legion of Mary? In my opinion, the Legion of Mary is the most effective system for lay evangelization that exists in the Church today. I believe that the reason for its effectiveness is that it is entirely traditional. It is the old evangelization. It began in 1921 and has the same exact structure, rules, and guiding principles now as it always had. It grew to maturity in a traditional Catholic culture and thrives in that same culture today. The current handbook states, in exactly the same wording as pre-conciliar versions, the Legion of Mary is an association of Catholics who, with the sanction of the Church and under the powerful leadership of Mary Immaculate, Mediatrix of all graces, who is fair as the moon, bright as the sun, and to Satan and his legionaries, terrible as an army set in battle array, have formed themselves into a legion for service in the warfare which is perpetually waged by the Church against the world and its evil powers. How many other organizations have changed almost entirely from what they were before the Council? How many still speak of perpetual warfare of the Church against Satan, of the necessity of being Catholic, of the importance of our Blessed Mother? The Legion of Mary works to strengthen the faith of Catholics, to recall those who have fallen away, and to convert non-Catholics, all through personal contact. The Handbook says that the Legion is always on duty for souls, ever at hand to carry the weak through their many weak moments, vigilantly watching to surprise the hardened at their rare moments of softness, unremitting in search for those who have strayed, unmindful of self, all the time standing by the cross of others and standing there until the work is consummated, just like Mary. Legionaries do things as simple as saying the rosary, rosary with people in nursing homes. We have a legionary who, among her other works, visits a Catholic stroke victim who can barely make any response. She simply reads him stories about the saints, but when she does, light comes back into his eyes, and unable to speak, he gestures her to continue. How easy is it for a soul at the end of life in a nursing home somewhere to lose his grip on the faith? The Legion of Mary is there to strengthen that soul, to be the presence of Mary for that soul. At the same time, legionaries do things as bold as going up to perfect strangers in the park or door to door offering them rosaries and information about the Church. Doing so, they have met many fallen away Catholics and given them a new opportunity, new hope. They have been so vigilant in this that the local Baptists have attempted something similar, sowing tares instead of wheat. They even blatantly copied our homemade pamphlet which you can see, if you like, after Mass at the Mary Table, and also our latest response. The forces of the enemy will not give up easily, and so neither will we. The difference being that Mary and her soldiers are guaranteed the ultimate victory. What is required of the legionary? The active member spends about two hours in such work every week, 
That's about 100 hours a year, equivalent to spending two weeks on a mission trip every year. It is safe to say that most legionaries do in a year what others might not do in a decade, perhaps even in all of their lives, all without taking time off work, without failing in their other duties. Just one of our Presidia, having around 14 members, contacted 5,000 non-Catholics last year. The other major commitment the Legionary makes is to a weekly meeting, which lasts about an hour and a half, but combines prayer and study and accountability. This meeting is essential to, the, to Legion membership. The Legion is an army, and as such, it requires obedience, self-sacrifice, and discipline. There are some who have a lot of energy, but because they lack either discipline or humility, they waste away their efforts acting on their own. The meeting is necessary to keep legionaries on track and free from theological error, to make sure that Mary's army never wavers. Outside of devotion to Mary, one of the other main requirements of the legionary is courage. The handbook states that attempts to bring people closer to God will occasionally be met by resentment or angry words and criticism. If Catholics are timid in the face of human respect, tragedy results, and I quote, Everywhere the faithful are living in the midst of great communities of unbelievers or non-Catholics or lapsed Catholics. Five percent of these would be won by the first serious effort which presented the Catholic doctrines to them individually. Then that five percent would be the thin end of a wedge to conversions on a great scale. But that effort is not made. Those Catholics would wish to make it Yet they do nothing because their powers of action are paralyzed by the deadly poison of human respect. Faith is ordinarily not lacking, but courage is. The Legion system is designed to increase and strengthen one's courage to overcome this timidity. The Legion takes ordinary people and transforms their little efforts this four hours a week into the work of an army. So who is the Legion for? Everyone over 18 can be an active member. It is a perfect fit for both introverts and extroverts. For extroverts, it channels their natural ener energies giving them the foresight, experience, and supervision they need to make their efforts produce the greatest amount of fruit possible. And it is perfect for introverts because it gives them a firm and reasonable structure. No one is left out on his own. The less experienced are always led by the more experienced. And there is a clear and thoughtful order to everything. I have seen myself the most introverted people, week after week, going out, talking to strangers, sharing their faith in a way that, without the Legion, they might never have done. Now, of course, one's duties of state must come first. There are many people who cannot be active members in the Legion because they really do need to spend their time working and taking care of their families. But there is no one too busy or too young to be an auxiliary. An auxiliary member helps the Legion's work by reciting a short set of prayers every day, which takes just a few minutes, in addition to the rosary. And so many busy moms, dads, and even children, these too can be part of Mary's army. As for the rest, especially those 18 and above who do not have the cares of a family, what have you done lately with your confirmation graces? 
By your confirmation, you were made a soldier of Christ. What better way to exercise these graces than by joining Mary's own army? But don't take my word for it. There are legionaries, your fellow parishioners, waiting after Mass to answer any questions you have and to, to tell you why they love the Legion. At the Second Vatican Council, certain high-ranking and influential prelates sought at every turn to downplay Mary, to hide her importance in the hopes of not offending Protestants. And their wicked influence continues in the Church today. What does the Legion of Mary say about such an idea? Again, from the current handbook, those who act in this way do not realize that they may, might as well preach Christianity without Christ as ignore Mary's part in redemption. For God himself has thought fit to arrange that no foreshadowing or coming or giving or manifestation of Jesus should be without Mary. Jesus is obscured because Mary is kept in the background. Thousands of souls perish because Mary is withheld from them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.